In today's episode, we'll take a trip from Asheville, North Carolina to Hot Springs, North Carolina, an entry point for the famed Appalachian Trail. We'll hike the AT to the top of Lover's Leap, where Chris pushes the boundaries of his comfort zone. So join us as we search for and find breakfast at a trailside diner, walk around the town a little bit, and then reward ourselves for a successful hike with a stop at Big Pillow Brewing for a pint or two. And be sure to stick around till the end, because with our question for discussion this week, we want to find out about your comfort zones. So in the morning, we knew we should eat something big because we're going to go hiking along the Appalachian Trail. But we didn't want a chain breakfast joint. We wanted something local with a nice country breakfast. We just could not seem to find any place anywhere near us. So we headed out looking for some place, maybe even some place to snack. Not far from the neighborhood we were staying in was a restaurant that's famous for its donuts. It's called Hole. And in fact, their donuts are so famous that in 2016, their bourbon molasses donut was named the dessert of the year by Bon Appetit magazine. We stopped in there, there was quite a line, and little did we know that each donut is handmade to order while you wait. Well, unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of time to wait because we had a busy day planned. So we had to bypass whole and not have one of their famous donuts. We're sorry. We Northerners, we're always in such a hurry. (laughs) I know. So we headed towards our destination, Hot Springs, and we kept looking for a small town which would have a little diner that we could get breakfast in, and we just had no luck. We checked the internet, we finally found a little place in a town called Marshall, North Carolina. Online we found Main Street Cafe in Marshall, and it had five stars, well known for their breakfast in this small town. Uh, Marshall is the county seat of Madison County, North Carolina. And so we stopped there in Marshall uh, looking for the Main Street Cafe and walked through the town a little bit. Chris spoke with one of the locals about breakfast because when we walked down to Main Street Cafe, we found a sign that said they were closed for the holiday weekend for a family reunion. What are we going to (laughs) do? Yeah. I was hungry. It was a theme on this trip to the South, not being able to find an early breakfast. Apparently, we eat breakfast earlier up in Indiana and in the Chicago area than they do down there. <coughs> but Chris did speak with a gentleman. He didn't really have a lot of ideas. He did suggest a vegan diner there. And it was nearby. He said, I'm not sure if you're going to like anything like that. I don't, but... <laughs> We got back on the road toward Hot Springs. Again, we sourced the internet, and since it's on the Appalachian Trail, we thought, surely to goodness, they will have a place with big breakfast. And we did find a place. We found the Smoky Mountain Diner. I'm sure that makes you happy. (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) As we entered Hot Springs, we crossed the French Broad River and passed the Hot Springs Resort and spa, but we'll tell you more about that later. We didn't have much trouble finding the Smoky Mountain Diner. This diner is known for serving locals, hikers, and guests in hot springs for more than 25 years. And it's located right on the Appalachian Trail, or the AT. It's known for serving uh, homestyle food in large portions, including two kinds of ham, one Virginia and one country. And I did have to ask for the difference. They also serve cathead biscuits, so named because they are freeform biscuits in the size and shape of a cat's head. Chris met Roy, an older gentleman who razzed, or for those of you who are in Ireland, slagged him about not finishing his breakfast. Even though it was the size of a platter. We also chatted briefly with some Appalachian Trail hikers that were there, one of whom was from our home state of Indiana and was a student at Purdue University on summer break. So after having a few laughs with Roy, we were properly fortified with breakfast and we headed out to look for the start of the Appalachian Trail. Hot Springs, North Carolina is a very small town. Population 
535. They are very proud of their trail town identity. So we found the Welcome Center and visited with a man who worked there, and he told us something quite interesting. Yeah, he said he was born in Ireland and that he has a dual citizenship now, U.S. and, and Ireland. So we talked to him for a while. He gave us a little bit of information and directions to the start of the trail. We looked at some of the historic information in there. So as we left the Welcome Center, we made sure we checked the board outside, which has updates on the trail. Hmm, good thing we're not taking the food with us. <laughs> we are food. But only the slowest one is food. <laughs> Very true. We didn't have any trouble finding the trail, seeing as how the Appalachian Trail runs right down the sidewalk in Hot Springs, and the symbol is embedded in the sidewalk. I think the first time I looked at, at it and said, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> but now we know. Before we get started on the trail, we want to thank all our viewers and subscribers. We have had a tremendous influx of new viewers, so we want to thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we followed the Appalachian Trail down the sidewalk to the French Broad River and saw where it diverted down toward the river off the road and we had looked ahead of time at the blaze system. The blazes are color-coded depending on what trail you're on. The white ones were for the Appalachian Trail and the orange ones were for the Lover's Leap Trail and we would be taking both of those trails in this loop. The position of the rectangles shows whether you go straight ahead turn right, turn left, if you're starting the trail or if you're ending the trail. And once you understand them, they're very easy to recognize, easy to understand. But Chris did find an animal friend along the trail. I know it's slow, but it is a snail or a slug or we'll have to look up and see what exactly it is. Probably a lot safer than meeting a bear. At least you can outrun this one. I hope. Without any travel. <laughs> I certainly hope so. As we got down to where the French Broad River was on the Appalachian Trail, we saw that it really earns its name as uh, being broad. Although, I will have to say, I thought about the fact that my late dad would have had something to say about the name of the river, the French Broad River. <whistles> I'm sure. <laughs> I'll stay away from that. <laughs> We found a really interesting spot there along the river. So we came across the USGS stream gauging station, which was the uh, United States Geological Service. You'll see the gauge on it, and it will tell you what the flood stage is and how high the water has been in the past. I think the record was 23 feet, and that was in 1916. The French Broad River kind of runs in a big valley between mountain ranges. And the water really uh, was really rushing that day. We had had some rain, and and it was very swift moving water. The water would be really dangerous. Then. Oh yeah, very, very. At that point, we started to climb the switchbacks up to Lover's Leap. So we're sticking to the right on this part of the trail because it's a pretty steep drop off, and the trail's not very wide. The hike up the trail was very narrow, which I don't care for at all, and rather steep. And it, there were a lot of switchbacks. And then it got more rocky as we got near the top. We thought we were coming up onto the top. Oh, I think we're almost to the top and came upon a young couple and their dog and had a really nice overlook over the river and they informed us, oh, this is not the top, there's more. <laughs> And that last little bit from that ridge that we were on to the top was quite rocky. I think you would call that scrambling. It was a point where you couldn't just walk upright. You had to climb with your hands involved, too. So. A little bit. I did not have my camera out filming anything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there weren't a lot of solid footholds at that point. You really had to just kind of spread out and grab things and crawl around, kind of crab walk at points. I was good at that. Yes. <laughs> he, he did not like it, but he was good at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. At 
that point, when you're at the summit, the Lover's Leap Trail splits from the Appalachian Trail. So it took us a little while to locate which way the split went and which trail it was. Uh, but once we found it, the Lover's Leap Trail actually uh, had a much more gradual decline than the AT had going up. You didn't have all those switchbacks, and it was a much more gradual descent. And an easier surface to walk on to, as well. You didn't have those steep drop-offs on the side like no. you did <laughs> going up the front side. But Chris did well, I thought. I'm here to tell about it. <laughs> he lived to tell. You did. <laughs> So Chris, how does it feel to have uh, hiked part of the Appalachian Trail? Well, I'd like to say I'm very proud and, and very happy about that, but I'm more relieved than anything that we're heading down. I have a, a big fear of heights and small footpaths with drop-offs. Uh, yeah, I'm relieved at this point, but let's, let's get to the bottom and maybe have a cold beer and talk about it. <laughs> so the trail back down was very gradual. Um, it was very picturesque. So on the Lover's Leap side of the trail, we have orange blazes instead of the white ones that we had on the AT. Because you're still on trail. There are all these wild magnolias here uh, on Lover's Leap Trail. In fact, this one still has a couple of blooms on it. It's crazy to see them growing wild. I managed not to injure myself. You notice how I do fine, like climbing up the rocky parts, and then I have to cross this little bridge, and I like trip. Oh, so. hang on, hun. <laughs> True to form. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we finally got back down to the road, though, where the Appalachian Trail had started, and we did one last cross over the French Broad River there. Uh, and at that point, we came up upon Hot Springs Resort. Now, Hot Springs Resort was originally called Warm Springs in 1778, which I thought was really funny. Uh, in 1886, they changed the name to Hot Springs when a higher temperature spring was located there. And it is one of the only natural hot springs in the eastern U.S. It has been the site of several resorts throughout the years. I did find this postcard of one of the older resorts. There is a current resort there that has numerous outdoor hot tubs, which are linked to the springs, so the natural hot mineral water circulates in the tubs. Uh, they have a lot of camping sites, cabins, they have suites, they're open year-round. Uh, and I'll put a link to some videos here. Uh, one of them, uh, a couple actually visits hot springs and visits the, the resort and the springs. And another one is just a really nice walkthrough of the town since we focused mostly on the trail. Uh, we wanted to be able to show you a little more of the town and these are some really nice videos that we found on it. So once we crossed back into Hot Springs, there was a local microbrewery there called Big Pillow Brewing. That was where I was to get my reward for hiking up the trail. <laughs> we walked in, it's a very nice atmosphere, a lot of conversational people that were fun, big outdoor uh, yeah, just a large outdoor venue uh, where I guess they have live music there too. I thought they had great beers. They had a nice assortment of beers. Uh, I think I had a hazy IPA and uh, I'm sure you had a regular IPA. Uh, was it called Roof Dog? Oh, maybe. Roof. Dog on a roof? Something. Something like that. <laughs> we'll post it on the screen. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. Uh, if you want to hear more about that brewery, uh, we'll put a link right up here. We'll put a card uh, and you can see our video on Asheville breweries. And even though this wasn't in Asheville, we did give this one an honorable mention uh, as one in the Asheville area. Uh, but yeah, the staff and the regulars were very friendly. We had some great conversations. It was dog friendly. Yes. Which I always love it when you can pet. What's better than drinking beer and petting dogs? <laughs> Nothing. And it was a really relaxing way to unwind after pushing ourselves on the trail. Do you remember why it's called Big Pillow Brewing? I do, as a matter of fact. Big Pillow is actually a natural water feature that has to do with rapids in the river. There's a lot of river rafting in that area and a lot of not only AT hikers, but a lot of river rafters that come through there hang out at this bird. And so that's why it's called Big Pillow. So I think it has to do with the, the way the white water rushes over big rocks and it kind of looks like a big pillow. So question to our viewers, what have you done either lately or something that sticks out in your mind that really took you out of your comfort zone, 
but you felt good about doing it later. Let yeah. Us, let us know. Yeah. What do you, what have you done that keeps your life interesting? What's something new you've tried or something that maybe you weren't sure about, but you did it anyway? Um, we'd like to hear your experiences with stepping out of your comfort zone. Let us know in the comments below. If you're enjoying this video, take a look at one of these videos from our North Carolina playlist and be sure to hit the button with our faces to subscribe. And with that, we will see you next time. Thanks again. Bye.